When it comes to investing, I'm pretty old school. I like to invest into things I can touch, feel, see, and of course, things that actually add value to our world. Call me crazy, but I like to invest into things that have intangible and intrinsic value. This is one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of real estate and commodities. I've always held a big portion of my investment portfolio in either real estate or commodities-based investments. And gold has got to be one of those key investment strategies. However, there is one thing I just don't like about gold by itself. By itself, gold only checks two of the three key elements of every investment that I make. Number one, it does preserve current value. Two, it does have future appreciation value. However, the one thing it's missing, it doesn't cash flow. Because an investment in gold essentially doesn't cash flow and it is based purely on the appreciation of future value, I tend to prefer my investments therefore in gold to be focused on businesses and industry sectors behind gold, for example, mining stocks. Now, of course, irrespective of the industry sector, it is always important to make sure that you look at the fundamentals, to make sure that you study the financials and the underlying intrinsics of a company before investing. And this is why Darwin and I created StockScreen.app. If you haven't already joined the early waiting list, make sure you go on and join StockScreen.app. Sign up for that early waiting list. We are making this available to the public later this year. So today, of course, we are looking at Kinross Gold. It is a stock I've held in my portfolio for a considerable amount of time, although they've had a tremendous amount of value wiped off in the stock of late. In fact, the stock was previously trading up in uh, the early part of 2020 at a high of just over nine bucks. It has since fallen back down to 3.74. Now, looking at the shares outstanding, we've got 1.3 billion shares outstanding. Insiders hold 0.25% of the stock. The short interest, relatively small, 1.15%. Institutional holding, of course, sitting at uh, 69.23%. And uh, if we look at the financial stats, we can see in terms of revenue, they've done 3.25 billion. Debt on hand, most recent quarter, 2.64 billion. Equity sitting at 5.82 billion. Net income is in the red at negative 605 million. Uh, cash sitting at 418 million. And free cash flow sitting at 253.10 million. Look at the overviews on the stock. We've got a market cap of 4.5 billion. Enterprise of 7.5 billion. P ratio of 187.5. And then, of course, we have the dividend yield of 3.2%. Now, if we move down very quickly and have a look at our cash flow statement, we can see on the operating cash flows, we went 1.96 billion in 2020, 1.14, 1.05, and then 1.05. Free cash flows went, went 104, 196 million, 242, and then 253 million. So there has been an improvement in the trading 12 months on the free cash flows, but it's considerably off where they were in 2020. And then, of course, if we look at our balance sheet uh, assets, we've gone 10.9 billion, 10.4, 10.4, and then 10.40. Liabilities and equity, of course, uh, we are heading in a slightly better direction in the uh, trading 12 months. 6.6, 6.5, 5.8, and then up to 5.88. Uh, looking at our uh, fundamental scoring, 25%. P ratio is, of course, sitting very high at 187. Our benchmark is below 25. Net margin, 17. Uh, net equity, uh, 5.8, uh, which is, of course, largely based on shareholder investment at the moment. And there has been considerable shareholder dilution, especially if you have a look at uh, the income statement, which we'll come back to in just a second. Uh, we can see that there's been considerable dilution between 2022 and the trading 12 months, which, of course, would go based on the premise that they have been raking up some losses in 2022. So speaking of those losses on the earnings per share, they went 106 down to 0.18. And then, of course, a big loss in 2022 at 0.48, currently sitting at 0.02. So they are back in profit, but only, only just. Revenue, 4.2, 3.7, 3.4, 3.4. Five, two. Gross profits went 2.3, 1.02, 5.5, and 520.7 million. So there has been improvement in the trading 12 months, and you can see this on the operating incomes as well, but it really isn't the greatest improvement currently. Uh, and then, of course, if we come down and study our debt, uh, the debt to equity ratio 45%, it is below our benchmark of 40, but not terribly. 
uh, but still 45% is higher than what we're comfortable with. Current ratio 2.47, so they're well covered on the short-term debt. And free cash flow uh, to debt is currently sitting at 5.37%. We would like that, of course, to be above 10%. On our momentum scores, they just aren't getting anywhere. Uh, revenue, we can see, has been inconsistent. Gross profit inconsistent. Operating income inconsistent. Net income and the earnings per shares have all been inconsistent, which translates into that operating income and free cash flows. Now, if we look at our growth factors, also absolutely nil on the on the growth. Return on equity, 0.49. Return on asset, 2%. Return on investor capital, 0.5. And of course, earnings per share has been negative growth. Absolutely horrible on momentum, absolutely horrible on growth. And then of course, if we look at our dividend scores, uh, we've got 50% for that 3.2 dividend. The dividend cost is sitting less than free cash flow, so that's at least good. Power ratio is sitting at 52%, that's less than 80, which is good. Uh, the dividend has not been stable in the last five years. And of course, the dividend has not increased in the last five years. So they are therefore scoring 50%. Look at our valuation metrics. We've got a price to book of 0.89, a price to sale of 1.28, and a price to free cash flow of 18.15, which actually is not bad considering the quality of the stock historically. Look at our analyst ratings on the stock. We've got uh, one sell rating, we've got seven hold ratings and five buy ratings. So generally the consensus from the analyst is leaning between hold and buy. And if we look at our growth projections, revenue growth projected at negative 4% and uh, earnings growth projected at 26%. So really a mixed bag of tricks coming in here. And then of course, if we look at our summaries, uh, fundamentals 25%, debt 33%, momentum non-existent and growth non-existent. So they really aren't doing too great from a fundamental perspective. So if we have a look at our uh, scorings, if we start off with the free cash flows, uh, they are currently trading on that uh, price to free cash flow of 18.15. Uh, if we had to go on the low side 15, 20 and then of course 25 on the high side that would bring them out to valuation today of 3.86 3.86 would mean that they probably have about three percent margin currently in them so if we had to go a little bit lower on our valuations just to give you an indication uh, if we worked around this just to kind of see where they would be valued at at a slow slightly lower multiple 2.89 that would mean that they potentially 22% overvalued. So I think probably the fair valuation here is if you had to go 15, uh, 20, and 25, I think that's closer to reality. I mean, they are an established company. They've been around for a fair amount of time. And of course, they have some really good mining contracts in place. So having said that, I think 386 is probably a fair valuation. That means potentially on free cash flows, we're looking at about a 3% margin. Now, of course, we are coming down to this DCF calculation. Now, on the low side, we are, of course, looking at earnings growth here. We're going to be very, very, very conservative. Uh, we're going to go with five. Of course, they are predicting our 26. Uh, we're going to go five, 10, and 15. And based on the current P ratio of 187, even though it's very high in terms of our comfort levels, we are looking at potentially 352 on the current valuation. So that means the stock is potentially about 5.8% overvalued. Um, so for me right now, in terms of Kinross, I feel that uh, it potentially is somewhere between fairly valued and slightly overvalued. And uh, I certainly wouldn't be buying more of the shares right now. I think you'd have to wait and see what the market does. I think also there probably is going to be a strong commodities uh, rebound at some point uh, over the next uh, 24 to 36 months. And so you definitely want to be investing some of your portfolio or at least gearing some of your portfolio more towards a commodities-based outlook uh, if you are looking at the macro. So definitely, I think Ken Ross does have some potential, but I think the financials are not in the best state of affairs currently, as has been reflected by the losses that were taken on last year. So that being said, if you are interested in rational conversations around stocks like Kinross and other stocks that of course uh, tickle your fancy, then you definitely want to make sure you hit that subscribe button here on our channel. We are probably one of the most rational stock investing channels here on YouTube. We don't do the hype. We don't do the bullshit. Uh, we're definitely not painting our hair yellow and doing all sorts of stupid shit. We are focused on long-term strategic investments and of course our discussions are geared accordingly. And if that is the kind of thing that appeals to you, then make sure you hit that subscribe button 
before you head out from this video and of course if you did find value from the video whether you subscribed or not please hit that like button it really does help us here on youtube and of course if there are specific stocks that you'd like us to take a look at make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below and of course if you haven't already done so stockscreen.app make sure you go and sign up it is a game changer this application for stock market investors uh, especially the retail investor it's going to make sure you screen past all the shit stocks that you focus your time and energy in terms of investing into understanding businesses of the actual stocks that are profitable that have a good balance sheet income statement and of course warrant your time going forward so if that is your kind of thing stockscreen.app make sure you sign up for the waiting list right now